All right, I think that does it for game coverage, at least for tonight. Congrats again to the Kansas City Chiefs, a familiar finish to a fun season. We'll have more Super Bowl coverage coming later this week. Plenty more to get into from that. But the cool thing about the NFL is that hope springs eternal. It's the most parody-driven league in American sports. Everybody's got a chance every year. And we are officially now at 0-0 for every team in the NFL. So to close out the show... What better way to do it than to make everybody mad? We'll take a very, very, very early look at the top of the power rankings as it looks right now. I understand the challenge that's ahead of me here. Free agency hasn't happened. The NFL draft feels like it's light years away. So much is going to change in the coming months about what every team in the league looks like. But... The day after the Super Bowl, with the confetti still sitting on the field in Las Vegas, let's just take a look at what it might look like. So here is my way, way too early top 10 for the 2024 season. I'm going to start it down at number 10 with the L.A. Rams. What a journey we've been on. A team that was written off at the start of this season. Turns out when you nail some draft classes... Things can go pretty well. Not only did this team make the playoffs, but most of their of their talent is very young and under contract. You got a whole bunch of young players surrounding stars like Aaron Donald, Matt Stafford, and Cooper Cup. Go out, find some more guys. Go find another, another Puka Nakua. Go find some help on that defense. Will the Rams use their first-round draft pick for the first time in an eternity? Cannot wait to see how it goes, but this team is positioned to make a big jump in 2024 at number nine a much more veteran team but a very talented team the Cleveland Browns not the way they wanted it to go in the playoffs but clearly the talent is all there they've got the defensive player of the year they've got the coach of the year they've got studs on offense how well will Nick Chubb recover from a very very major injury I think that's the big question there or the second biggest question anyway, because obviously it's all going to hinge on getting better production out of Deshaun Watson. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be Joe Flacco in 2024 with the money that they have committed to Deshaun Watson. So we will see how he justifies that contract. But you can't deny the amount of talent in Cleveland on both sides of the ball at number eight. I don't even want to bring him up. It's my Dallas Cowboys, the team that I am forever linked to. It is a crossroads year in Dallas that clearly the talent is top 10. Most of their key players are under contract. They got to figure out what to do with guys like Tyron Smith. But but the stars are all there. Mike McCarthy's in the final year of his deal. How hard do they push to try to get over the hump? Do they extend Dak Prescott? Laugh if you want to, but that's probably their best bet to improving the talent on a team that fell woefully short. So I get it. Do they deserve such a lofty ranking when they've fallen so short in the playoffs? I don't know, but the talent's there. I just want to see how willing the Cowboys are to push their chips into the middle of the table. At number seven, I feel like this might be controversial, but I've got the Philadelphia Eagles, and yes, I know the Cowboys won the division. The Cowboys spanked the Eagles in December, but I'm not closing the book on the Eagles roster. It is incredibly talented. They've got the pieces that they need. I'm curious to see what happens with Jason Kelsey, whether he actually retires. They do have a few interesting free agents. They've, they're getting older. They're getting a little long in the tooth, but you still have a very impressive nucleus with those receivers, with Jalen Hurts, Dallas Goddard, and even if they lose Kelsey, Kelsey a very above average offensive line. Obviously, Nick Sirianni is not playing around either. They went and got Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio to fix their coordinator problems. People are going to be dunking on the Eagles for a while because of the way their season finished, but I expect them to be right back at the top of the NFC in the mix to make a deep run in the playoffs once again. At number six, I've got the Buffalo Bills. It's just it's a testament to how I feel about Josh Allen that they're this high because, honestly, it, it kind of looks like a mess. They got a lot of salary cap situations to figure out. The defense is old and it is injured. What do you, I mean, Matt Milano and Tredavious White coming back from injury. What does Von Miller have left in the tank? How does Sean McDermott consolidate everything on the defensive side of the ball? What about any potential drama with Stephon Diggs? It's the story that just won't go away. Is he going to be a Buffalo Bill this year? I would assume he is, but it seems like that drama is going to linger around this team for the rest of his time there. 
But if you got number 17, you got a chance. The dude was a one-man wrecking crew this year, even with the turnovers. I like the Bills as long as Josh Allen plays for them. At number five, Baltimore Ravens, of course, the number one seed from this season. And maybe this feels low, but I do think this year is going to be a tough reminder for the Ravens of the cost of success in the NFL. They've already lost their all-star defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald. He's the head coach in Seattle now. But on top of that, I think you're going to see key pieces of this team get rewarded for their success. Can the Ravens afford to keep Justin Matabuke? What about Patrick Queen? the all-pro linebacker next to Roquan Smith. What about Geno Stone? Not even a starter, but he had so many interceptions. He's bound to get paid like one by somebody. There's going to be attrition in Baltimore, but you do have a two-time MVP in Lamar Jackson. That makes you feel a hell of a lot better. I think the Ravens are going to be just fine, but this is the price of success, and that's why it is so hard to sustain runs like the Chiefs have. At number four, I'm just going to keep driving the bandwagon. I did it in 2023, and it worked out well. I've got the Green Bay Packers all the way up at four. I was high on this team before I knew Jordan Love was that dude. Picked them to go nine and eight this year. So, of course, I'm even more excited now. You got Jordan Love right, raising his game to another level. You got his young pass catching core coming right alongside with him. Aaron Jones is going to hang around for another year. Feel great about the offense. And now they get a chance to revamp that defense. Yeah, they do have some cap space issues, but I think they can solve most of that pretty easily, in all honesty. And you get a new defensive coordinator in there, a chance to harness all that talent. I just I feel so good about where this te young team is going. Maybe I'll regret it later, but I really don't think so. At number three, I said this before the Super Bowl, the only teams that feel better than the Detroit Lions were the ones that played this weekend. The Lions got so close to playing in Super Bowl 58, just a couple of plays away from beating San Francisco, and they're kind of running it back. Yeah, a couple minor free agency issues to figure out, Jonah Jackson, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, but these are things that you can deal with, particularly when you realize the Lions, even with all the talent on their roster, they have $50 million in cap space. They could free up even more if they're willing to extend Jared Goff this year. So you can re-sign some of your stars, maybe go play in free agency a little bit. And turns out Brad Holmes knows a thing or two about drafting guys as well. I think the Lions have a real chance to be even better than the team that was oh so close to the Super Bowl. Maybe we'll be talking about them this time next year. And then obviously the top two shouldn't be surprising. At two, I've got the San Francisco 49ers. You could make a case for them to be one just because they're bringing the whole squad back. They're not really losing much in the way of meaningful contributors. That is the joy of having a cheap quarterback on a rookie deal. You can keep all these stars in place. You look at it on paper and you say, yeah, this is the most complete team in the NFL. Right up until you remember that they just lost to the Kansas City Chiefs. And that is why the Chiefs are in the one spot on paper, I, I, you can't really say you see it. They got to figure out what to do with Chris Jones. Can they afford to pay him? I lean toward no. You got to figure out what to do about Legereus Sneed, one of their best DBs. There's probably going to be some attrition here. But if this team just won the Super Bowl, how can I bet against them? First back-to-back -back champs in almost two decades. However it shakes out, whoever they lose and whoever they gain, it's hard to pick against a team that has Patrick Mahomes. So... Even if they're flawed, we already know they can be pretty damn good when they are. So, yeah, I feel perfectly comfortable keeping the Chiefs at number one heading into another year as they seek a three-peat. Sounds crazy, but in the era of Patrick Mahomes, maybe not. All right. That is the way too early top 10. It's going to change so much. Texans fans, don't be mad at me. I almost put you on the list, but there are a lot of free agent issues to figure out there in Houston. A lot of that cast could not could be on the move. We'll see how it goes. It's, it's all going to change. It's February, guys. Free agency is about a month away. It's going to be so much fun tracking how these teams vary, handle their various issues. 